do we move past the sleepless nights and um, mindless confusion that can often accompany this type of abuse? And will the pain ever go away? These questions are asked by every survivor. And if you are one of those, we're going to find some answers for you today. My name is Tracy Malone, and I am the founder of NarcissistAbuseSupport.com. I am an educator, and I am a coach, and I help people just like you figure out what they need to do to move past this and start to heal. My guest today, some of you might know her, Nancy, I'm going to screw this up, Sung Young. Tell me if I did that right, Nancy. <laughs> um, she is a coach. She is an author. And she is also a fellow YouTuber. And um, today we're going to talk about the destructive things that people do that keep them in that cycle of, of not being able to heal. We're also going to talk about what should you be doing. The expert advice from people who have come through the darkness to the light and can give you the hope and some resources and maybe some new tools to think of things a different way. So without any further ado, let's welcome Nancy. Hi, Tracy. Thank you for having me. It is such an honor to have you to talk about this topic today. We would like to talk with everybody about um, the difficulties and the destructive pe things that people do that stop them from healing. So do you want to start us off with something that you have seen that makes it difficult for people to be able to heal? Well, one of the things that I notice, um, and it's really, really prominent, is just the mindset, you know, mindset of a person, the way they uh, hold view about the world uh, in relation to themselves. And so, um, and, you know, rightfully so, I think, the reason why they have the mindset they have, the mindset that I'm talking about is, um, you know, victim mindset. And I think it comes from a, a legitimate place. You know, they um, likely they've been through child abuse. I think that's sort of the most common thing. And so they were victimized at one time. And as they grew older, they just kind of held on to that as their, kind of an identity. That's even why people who've been abused tend to, or neglected, tend to attract that kind of relationship when they get older. And I mean, there's, it's also kind of complex, there's more to that, but, but then when they are, you know, in one of those relationships and, you know, or when they get out, um, they have a hard time healing because they think of themselves from that perspective of being a victim. So if you, you know, I mean, I look at like those hero stories, like, and it's so similar, like those, you know, superhero stories, where if you look, the heroes usually are, you know, go through all kinds of actually horrible stuff, but they're just busy just taking care of things. And, you know, they, they know they have the strength, they know that that's their sort of identity is to, you know, solve things and, you know, resolve things. But the victims, they are, their job is to get rescued. You know, and so, and I'm probably simplifying that too, but that, that being a victim, you're waiting for someone to rescue you. So even when you leave someone, you know, who was abusive, um, your sort of mindset is that way. So that means you indulge and in you know, I hate to call it indulging because at one, at first you do need to talk and share and, and get feedback and get support. But what I find people doing is they just kind of, they just stay there and then they group up with people you know who are in the similar state and they constantly focus on you know what happened in the past why they are you know what they are I mean I hear common questions like how could he do that how could she do that you know god can you believe they just like went and found another lover you know or it's just a constant you know, can you believe they don't have any empathy? You know, every time I hear them say things like, can you believe they don't have any empathy? They don't feel sorry. You know, you think like, yes, of course. So, you know, that's who they are. And at first it's good to learn that these people have these characteristics. It's, it's really helpful. 
But after a while, you have to just kind of put it in a box, you know, like that's who they are now. I have to look out for myself, but it's like they are not looking out for themselves. They did the good thing of leaving. That was great. But then they are then in a way taking over the, the abuser's job by constantly uh, regurgitating and talking about and focusing on all of these things that really makes them relive, you know, those moments. Right. And so I, they just, yeah. I think, I think what you're talking about too is something I see all the time. Yeah. Is that you are living in the past. Yes. Instead of today. And, and yeah. to know that, you know, a, a technique is to say, I'm safe here right now. And what happened yesterday, and you can't change what happened yesterday. Repeating that he had no empathy a hundred times is not going to change him. Yeah, yeah. Not having empathy. And it's not like it's a new thing. When you first learn, oh my God, they don't ever have empathy. Yeah. And share it a bunch of times. Share it. Get it out there. Learn about it. Research it. But then accept it. Yeah, he didn't have any empathy. What yeah. a work, right? If you take that instead of going back to the past and, and you're always going to live back there and yeah. we feel if we're in bad land, right? We're, we're in the past and, and all that stuff isn't happening right now. Right yeah. now, you're not dealing with that. You're understanding that. That's completely different, right? But when you're living back there and you're constantly... You know, I, I have people that are friends of mine because I have so many friends in my support groups and through this world that just go, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, and my wife does this all the time. No, she doesn't. She did it all the time. And if she does it yeah. now, you shouldn't give a crap. Um, yeah. It's so important to understand the difference. And you, as you said, you have to get to that recovery point. And then you have the power to go on to the other place. If you don't understand it, you're never going to move on. So get yeah. the education, get that. But then once you get it, stop watching videos on narcissists and start to watch videos on healing and yeah. start to watch things and read books that are going to take you into the present because yesterday didn't have self-help books we yeah. didn't learn about gratitude and forgiveness and all of the other things the shame the this the that all yeah. of things, as we learn about those those th that's in the past now and we can move on because we're building a new life this day means build tomorrow if this day is still occupied with yesterday how do we heal yeah I think, yeah, and I think that there's, you know, I, the part that I see too is that people who are in this, this realm, um, and I really think it has a lot to do with having been neglected and having been uh, not properly loved as children. And so they, you know, there's sort of uh, their barometer or, you know, their like temperature gauge for their lives is not that high, you know, so their expectation of what's normal, what should be normal, isn't that high. It's kind of a level of hopelessness. And so then, you know, they're, you know, they're, they don't have the, I think they lack the instinct of like, you know, like, I want to be happy. You know, I want to be happy. I want to thrive. I want to do something really cool with my life. And it's like, that's so, that's just not even within their, you know, I mean, like, there is, there, there has to be some inspiration for, you know, for, you know, growth and, and from reaching for that, that's also, that inspires you to heal. And I really think that a lot of these people, they're, that also affects them too. It's maybe, I don't know if you want to call that negative mindset, but it's sort of like, they don't know that they have the right to fight for themselves that they, they don't have the right to it's it feels that way it feels like you know because a person who thinks that that it's like i have a right to live a good life i have a right to live a happy life you know but if you don't you're just sitting there at the bottom like trying to like crawl out instead of like crawling maybe you could run and fly and you know whatever you know i i, I really like i think there's that too sort of um 
and I think that's why they like sit in that realm of, you know, uh, I mean, because like, you don't see, I, I, I don't know, I don't know all the like the life paths of these people, but I don't see inspiration. I don't see, you know, like, you know, what can I do to, um, you know, make my mark? You know, I see them just sort of in this survival mode. And that's sad too, because it's human potential, you know, but like, and so then they just live in the past and they live in the, you know, and they don't even realize, here's the thing that's really scary is because I, I've, you know, I've talked to some of these people where they say, well, but he did this to me. It's like, yeah, that was, so that was 15 years ago. He did that to you 15 years ago. You know, and it's like, yeah, but he did, you know, he did such a terrible thing to me. I can't, but they, it's like psychologically, they got it linked because, you know, you keep thinking about those moments. And then of course, in your head, you think about their face, you think about them and that thing. So then it's immediately linked. So it's, they don't realize they're actually being illogical because, you know, they're, they, they think it's that person's fault. Mm -hmm. And it, it's so real. It's how human minds work. You know, we, we get things linked, you know, and, and that becomes reality. But if you could, and I, I'm yet to figure out how to explain step by step, like, look, you know, that happened then. Now, who's doing the thinking? You know, who's doing the remembering? Who's, who is, you know, living those moments? You. That's what they have to realize is that, they're in charge now. Exactly. You know, I, I have a workshop that I do. I did it last week at my support group and I'm doing it next week for my support group, but it's online too. And yeah. it's about changing the story that's in our head. Yes. Because that story, like you were just describing, is literally from the past, right? But every yeah. time we bring it up, it puts us back in victim. Yeah makes us vulnerable it makes us injure ourselves. i mean really yeah we hear it we go into ooh, you know yeah ooh, yeah that, right if you can yeah. change the story that you're telling yourself and simplify the story to um you know remove all the emotion from it yeah and almost like a business transaction and i use this example in in the beginning of the course is we all have a scar on our body you know you got a cut here you fell out of a tree you broke your arm right uh -huh. if you were to tell the story and you broke your arm yesterday you might get on here and go oh my god i fell out of the tree and my shoe got stuck in the crack and then i had to go buy ambulance I remember, you know and, and that's full of emotion right yeah and that's where they get stuck now if you look back at that tree thing, and I fell out of the tree when I was 10, we're probably shortening that story to, I fell out of the tree when I was 10, broke my arm, and the story, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And that's the difference, and that's where we have to take the story from all that was done to you. We're not discrediting what happened. We're not discrediting what, what a, a jerk he or she was, mm -hmm. but we're just not going to live in that place anymore because that place is scary and dark and it hurts us and it scares our friends. I mean, if you think about the people who are stuck in this hamster wheel of story, mm -hmm. they're going around and around and their friends and family are scared to talk to them. Yeah, they're just, yeah. They're isolating themselves because their friends don't want to hear it. They're just like, oh God, she's coming over. She's going to tell me about what her ex-husband did again. I've heard the story 80 times. And then they stop calling you because they yeah. don't know how to help you. So your story is a big part of this. We tell it to ourselves and we tell it to others, but it also, that story attracts the wrong kind of people. Exactly. It, it, uh, it repels a healthy person. They're, yeah. If they hear that, it doesn't matter if it was 14 years ago and you're still talking about it. Yeah. It's showing them that you haven't healed. Now, if you tell that same story to a an abuser, a cluster B, anything in there, a narcissist, anybody, yep. they're, they're going to hear that and go, you know, I see opportunity. She yeah, ended. I you're a candidate. Exactly. <laughs> we have to learn to change this stuff. And yeah. and you know, I think a big part of it is is first of all, of course, going no contact. People don't, you know, they don't really understand it. 
of like the whole concept. There's like no contact. Okay, I won't see them. But that doesn't mean that you're not connected by text. And people that are in this perpetual hamster wheel are constantly looking at their text. Well, it was my birthday and he didn't text. Or, you know, you're, you're happy if they text and you're sad that they text because it opens the new wound again, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of times I find people have things that besides this cutting off the social, stopping it, it, yeah. it hurts so much to let go and just say they're dead to me because in no contact, they have to be dead to you. That means there's no way you could even hope that they might reach out to you. And so when you have that, that's where you can really start your healing process. But sometimes people have unfinished business. Like you might still have their TV at your house. Uh -huh. and, you know, well, he's going to call me. That's why I've got my phone out. He's going to want his TV soon, you know, and you hold on to the TV almost as hostage. <laughs> get them back. Yeah. Have you ever had anyone have that sort of thing where there's unfinished business that they might have to come back for? You know, I mean, I think, well, so the, um, the no contact, I see that more as, you know, because when we were in that relationship, you know, because I've been in one of those and I think you have too, there's kind of, it's almost like a drug addiction. I really think there is a chemical thing where you're chemically addicted. And so, you know, what do you do when you're trying to get off drugs? I mean, thank God I've never had drug issue, but you just, you know, you have to spend that time. You have to just stay away from it to get off that drug addiction, right? That addiction. But then I think also, there has, it, that has to be uh, coupled with self-work. And, uh, you know, to, I think that they have to actively do uh, work to uh, grow in their self-love and, uh, and self-care. Because, you know, as you do, as you're doing no contact, if you think about like, you know, holding things on, or holding on to things or wanting to contact them, uh, in some ways, it's sort of, uh, to me, a symptom of lack of, you know, lack of sense of self. I mean, it was lack of sense of self that kept us in that relationship or even was made us drawn to them or they were drawn to us, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I really do think that there has to be active, I mean, really assertive work, you know, self-work, like actually like actively doing it, you know, whether it's get into, you know, and I mean, like, I mean, of course, that's what I did. I did an extreme, like a boot camp and really just, you know, then I, and I had so much pride of, by, in, you know, for my own work that even though I missed him like crazy, I didn't, like, there's no way I want to talk to him. I'm like, screw you, you know, like you did that to me. But even, you know, so it's like, even though I had the feelings, you know, and, and heartbreak, it sort of, because I was like actively doing things, you know, like I had a regiment of like, you know, routine. I really actively did that. And I think that assertive sort of, you know, when you take action like that, you actually kind of grab strength. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what victim of a, abusive relationships and narcissistic relationships. Um, I think people who are in that role, that's what they, what, what they lack is that sort of, sense of self and knowing that you have strength and power that you can access because they're not used to having done it. And so I think it, that needs to be coupled, you know, and I, it, I know it's a little bit weird, uh, kind of foreign to say, but it's so helpful to just get into sort of, you know, discipline regimen because yeah. you know, human beings are, we're kind of like, I think when there's a empty space or I can't think of the word, but when, when there's a space, open something has to be there makes it easier and you're you know and it's good anyway and it's healthy so like i really believe that you need to immediately attack that that lack of sense you know self-appreciation self-love you know that needs to be immediately attacked otherwise you're vulnerable to going back i mean there's like statistics of like i think uh abuse victims you know seven yeah right and like 
because you know they miss them you know they you know and, and they feel powerless without them you know you know what's interesting i think about how i got into this role with my ex i think about how you know he started with just small control and then it kind of and like before i knew it i was already like but when you are when you of course i was candidate for that but you know but like if i think about how slowly you just become smaller and smaller and smaller and then as you become smaller they become even bigger because and then as they treat you worse and worse and worse you feel like you need them more and more and more you know because you're so small and by the time you know they're done with you you're like so tiny like you're nothing without them so you know when you god you know it takes courage to i i would have to say for them to leave it takes courage but then you know it's like they go they go back so i think that they have to immediately start work at building themselves building themselves gaining confidence finding their path finding their voice finding you know passion things that they can be excited about you know also remembering who they were so yeah many victims come and go i don't know who i am anymore because they made them that tiny like you were just saying yeah you know, and you've lost everything that was your passion. You might have lost your friends, and now what am oh, I? Yeah. All I yeah. have. <laughs> all I have. I don't know what else to do. Yeah. And and yes, people go into counseling, which is brilliant. Go in, yeah. get some counseling, get some coaching, talk yeah. to someone that really understands this. But yeah. there's a lot of things that the people who are stuck in that hamster wheel are often the ones that can't afford a counselor and can't afford to pay someone to do that. And so they feel like they're sort of abandoned to any kind of help. Nobody wants to help me. I mean, that's further victimizing themselves. Yeah. All you have to do is go to the library and yeah. take a book or ask the library to get a book that you might need. Right. Yeah. So knowing that there's these things and doing that work if only that get into the support groups you know i'm a big proponent of support groups all over the country there yeah. are out there and getting into one that isn't just a bitch session yes <laughs> goes, you know oh i can i can heal what is a boundary i i'm not good at that you know learn yeah. that learn how to do it or buy a book. There's probably five boundary books up on that shelf. Yeah. Every single one of them is different. Everything that I have learned, everything that I have conquered and learned to my own development was not just go buy one book on forgiveness, but four, four books on this, four books on that, because it's so different. And you go, this part works for me. That's, that looks like me. And, and yeah. but the rest doesn't, but this one, oh my God, there's three things. And then all of a sudden you have done the work to understand that wound. We come into this like relationship or even if it's their parent, right? It's their parent and they have had a relationship with their parent. They come into this and they get wounded. So how do we figure out what the wound is? That's where a coach and, and a counselor helps you and goes, you know, you've got this abandonment thing that wasn't just about this ex relationship but that goes back a little bit farther. How do you deal with something like that? And I brought props. Okay. This one is the Abandoned Recovery Workbook. Seriously, yeah. look how thick this thing is. <laughs> um, it, it, it helps you do the work. If you say to yourself, I'm gonna go buy that book and yeah. every morning while I drink my cup of coffee, I'm gonna do a couple of pages. There, there are things that you physically write in the book like you were in high school or something and maybe those grammar school where you had little boxes right but you're writing it and you're thinking things that you didn't think before and answers come to you when you think things differently yeah. yes yes so there's self esteem workbook this is a great book on understanding your self esteem understanding uh -huh. you know conquering your fears and your self doubt and def you know the, these behaviors that you're doing to yourself that are re-injuring you like we started at the beginning of the conversation. So there's so much help with everything that yeah. don't heal. Go to the library, go to my website. I have a list of the very best of those books. If I read four of these, that's the one I want you to get because that's going to yeah. be the most. Just see what other people are suggesting and, and go, 
I want to learn about that. I, I want to learn about that. And like you said, if your brain in today starts to go, I'm going to recover, I'm going to recover, you stop forgetting about what he or she did. All of that becomes, I don't really care. I, you know, I have, I have a quote that I have out there that there's a lot of life after I don't give a shit. And that, <laughs> that is what we have to do because if we yeah. hold on to that yesterday. We hold on to that. We are in a very bad position um, because we can't move forward. We are living in the past. So to start living today, start yeah. to do the work and figure out what your wounds were because going into another relationship, if you still have an abandonment wound, now you've got it triple packed because someone just abandoned you again. Yeah. You're going to set yourself up for someone that is going to abandon you. If you've got strong boundaries and you know that that abandonment wound was from your childhood and you work it through, you can recognize it and, and prevent it from happening again. Yeah. And it's interesting sort of on an energetic level when you have, uh, I mean, there's two, there's a couple of things like, on, on an energetic level, when you hold that sort of fear of abandonment, you know, it's, it's a miserable way to be in a relationship. Even if you have a relationship with someone healthy, you know, you're going to put a lot on them. But the other thing is, in terms of like, whether it's abandonment, whatever's happened with your parents or with lovers, you know, like we were talking, I think, before our video, we're talking about people needing to get closure. And, you know, one of the things that I think um, is that you can just, you know, and you were talking about in your workshop to talk about, uh, retelling a story or, or I, I forget how you said it, um, create, you know, and you come up with your own story and you can actually do it in a way that, um, it, you know, like my favorite way to do that is sort of in a way use a Socratic method because then when you, when you do that, you believe it. So like you, um, instead of just like making up a story and saying, boom, that's what it is. Because I think we do need to put things into, put things into a category. And that's how that's then when we make a decision, like this is what that means, then we could let it go. I think when we stay in a limbo is when we can't let it go. So what we could do is ask a question. Um, and somewhat it's somewhat kind of a spiritual question, but you could actually ask, there's several different questions you could ask. You could say, you know, um, what am I supposed to learn from this? Is there something I can learn from this experience? You know, or, or you know, like, instead of why did this happen to me? You could say, what could I learn from this? Or, you know, what was uh, lacking in my life? Or, you know, or is this a, a job I've, I've been given, you know, sort of from universe? Like, you know, is this my journey? I mean, there's so many like sort of ways of asking questions that, that land you a productive answer and that lands you a beautiful answer. And, you know, and I mean, in, in my experience, that's always been the case, you know, pretty much like anytime anything negative happens, whether it's lovers or anything like business, anything, if somebody does something wrong, whatever, you know, like I've gotten into the habit of asking like, okay, what can I learn from this thing that's going on? I sort of, you know, when you have the attitude of like, this is a gift, you know, this is gift for me to gain some strength or, and when you constantly look at it that way, you know, uh, that, that not only, you know, makes you a participant in, in, in a better bettering our world, our community, our, you know, but it also makes you happier and it ends up, you end up gaining in, in, a, in, a, in a way that you didn't imagine, you know? I mean, I think um, then you, you, that answer is, you know, you know, like I think about like, okay, you know, why did that person, why was my ex in my life? You know, I mean, I actually like for me and that's like what kind of what I addressed in my book is I actually that was a, the most scariest thing being abandoned you know I lost my mom I lost my whole family when I was three and then I was adopted by a family that was in both people pretty much I think displaying a lot of narcissistic qualities just lacking of empathy and really abusive so 
I had like abandonment issue that I didn't quite understand. So I was always afraid, you know, like I was always afraid of being left. And that was probably one of the most scariest thing in my life. So when my ex, my last ex, he just abruptly just kicked me out. And that was probably the worst. I've never had that happen to me. So, and of course it was a bad relationship. He was emotionally abandoning the whole time anyway. But the thing is like, I look at like, that happened, my biggest fear happened, being abandoned, kicked out, no place to go. And I had to like, you know, for a few hours I was homeless. I mean, that's a dumb thing to say because I could go to my family, but, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, that's not technically. That's a story anyway. you're telling. Huh? That's the story you're telling. But yeah, but, but anyway, uh, no, but like, I was like, where am I gonna go? I had to call my parents, my, my folks. And, so, but anyways, uh, but because that actually happened, something that I've always feared happened, it actually then pushed me into, uh, and because of all the bad things that I dealt with him and he was the worst. And I think about like, how is it, I'm a person who's been growing and then here suddenly I have this like the worst relationship, narcissist, I've never, you know. So, uh, but that actually prompted me to, it really inspired me to look at my childhood in the way that I never have. I mean, like I actually got to deal with that thing that I was afraid of all my life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, so I look at it like, honestly, like I feel kind of, I feel empathy for how unhappy he is because I gained this incredible answer. Mm -hmm. Like, that I, if I never met him, I wouldn't have been pushed so hard. I wouldn't have, if that relationship wasn't as horrible as it was, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have, it almost just like, I almost felt like, a, you know, glass, you know, I've been cleaning this glass, this is my life, there's like, and I literally pictured this glass with just the last layer of little dust left over and he shook it, you know, or being in my, in that relationship, it really shook my life to a point where I really had to face everything. And, you know, and the same thing for me too. I mean, yeah. I didn't own a self-help book in my life. Yeah. You know, I, I thought I had self-love. <laughs> I got my nails done. I colored my hair. <laughs> that was self-love. You know, it was to learn that self-love is not just taking care of yourself. Obviously taking care of yourself is really important. Yeah. Self-love means no, that is not acceptable. And kicking them out when people show signs, you know, that's the courage to be brave and fight for your own life versus being turned down to a teeny little person because <laughs> of constant and constant abuse. Um, I, I um, started a course about three weeks ago. So we just had week three and yeah. it's called the Course of Miracles. Have you ever heard of it? Yes. Uh -huh. So um, the, the whole premise behind it is to help me see things differently. So um, to me, it's, it's how it, they say talking about instead of living out of fear, live out of love. So see things from a different lens, which is when we heal, we start to see things through a different lens, right? Yeah, yeah. That past stuff that she did, he did stuff. Uh, yeah, they did it and I don't care, I'm moving on. Yeah. That's what you want to get. And I think it's important for everyone to find their journey, find your wounds, and then start to heal that and make that your priority. Forget about like worrying about, will I ever date again? Will I be alone for the rest of my life? Stop worrying about that or you will be because you're gonna never heal. Focus in on, I don't wanna feel this way anymore. What do I need to do? What book should I read? Where should I go next? What should I go? And, and just play along with your life, but live it today, not yesterday. And when we have that power to use our words, like you're saying, to think about how we're doing it, to reframe things, to heal those wounds, we will be healed. And, and um, I think that's really important for people. Do you have any closing things you want to say? <laughs> I uh, well maybe this is next time but I actually was curious about how you 
other than the book, what instigated you to like say, I'm going to heal instead of being a victim? Where's my other book? I have a book. Up <laughs> Wait, where's the book? Oh no. Where is it? So, um, oh, it's holding up my camera. Dang. We <laughs> Ooh, that was the perfect height. All right. So I am a big proponent of going to your, uh, our thrift, thrift stores um, to find books on Saturday. They're dollars. So I buy all these books and I bring them to my support group. So I found this one that is called A Year Without Fear. And it was actually a, um, a, a week or so after I had just given a lesson on fear and how to yeah. face it and how to do things like that. And then this book showed up. And to me, when I look at going to the thrift store for a book, um, I think they find me, right? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not searching for something, but what I love I, that. I, I love that. Yeah. Right? And so this book, I bought it for a dollar. It's 365 days of these little affirmation esque things, but, but these little stories. And yeah. I, I started it in July and I had a client and I was finishing up with her. She just finalized her divorce. And I said, I'm going to send it to her because it's so powerful. And I've been in love with it. So I go on to, to Amazon, I click on it. And I'm like, I bought it. And then I was like, let me look at this author. And I went to her website and she lived here in Denver. And I went, wow, wow. He was about to give in less than four days, the Course in Miracles. And I went, I don't even know enough about it. I'd never actually touched the book before. I was like, yeah. I want a miracle and I want to understand this. <laughs> Another healing modality I'm in. And so I called three of my friends from a support group and now all four of us are going. So, um, it has been an amazing gift. This woman's been teaching it for 28 years. Wow. But, um, she's written five other books. So now I have those five on my coffee table. <laughs> it's all about healing. It's, it's about letting go of that fear. And, yeah. um, it's about helping you to see things differently. And, uh, my mother was also a narcissist and, um, this week people were just, going around the room, everybody had different things, whoever wanted to share and, and mothers came into it somehow. And there was always something that was part of the story of my mother always had these other daughters, like, and she would flop them in our face and say, you know, oh, I just spent four hours shopping for this special thing for Susie. I think she'll just love it. And me and my sisters would go, we get a $50 check, which I'm not being ungrateful for, but why didn't you ever shop for the perfect thing for us, right? Uh, hurt by yeah. it. And this, this thing was always a, you know, the story was that she was doing this to us. And yeah. in the course of miracles the other night, because of all this banter of all the other people and the, and the lady leading it, I saw it a different way. And I saw that she was 2000 miles from her daughters and, and, she was sort of telling us, I have a friend. Someone cares about me. Because Oh uh, yeah. But we were we were taking it as this affront of Ur, you know, yeah. that's our yeah. story. And yeah. That, and that that is one of the miracles. And they were like, that's what it's all about. It's to see things differently. Because yeah. with that, I could let go of some of the anger and the hurt of what she did. And so as you start to develop this. Uh, yeah. you know, Things start coming up. So that was my Course of Miracles miracle for the week. <laughs> um, and I got I got another five weeks to keep on learning and that's amazing. That's beautiful. Yeah. So I think I think yeah. it'll help. Um and again, I am seven years out of my divorce and yeah. now about to be four years out of the end of the, the jerk head. Um <laughs> the boyfriend? The boyfriend, yeah. yeah. Um and yeah. so you know, do I need to keep going and looking at courses? Do I keep needing to do these things? Yes. Right. A am I ever completely healed? Maybe. But the more work we do, yeah. the more we see things from a different perspective and we become wholer and wholer. And that's what yeah. I want to know that these things that we do are going to heal us no matter what it is. You yeah. Know, going to a support group is a step in the right direction. Um, yeah you know, picking up a book, another step in the right direction. So don't give up hope and don't think, oh, right. I can't a therapist, I can't heal and get stuck in the hamster wheel of watching YouTube videos, except for mine, all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, right. just 
and just, you know, go, what else do I need to know? Turn on a TED talk, go watch Brene Brown, yeah. you know, yeah. fill your heart with that kind of stuff. Learn yeah. courage, learn yeah. strength, learn vulnerabilities. And those are things that you might not have understood before. So yeah. it makes you stronger. Yeah, it's definitely an opportunity to grow. Yeah, it is. I love what you said. I think I wrote it down about like um, looking at this as a gift because, you know, if I had not been arrested by 3X, I would have never picked up a book on gaslighting, which someone said, he's gaslighting you, look it up. Yeah. Rabbit hole, narcissist. Oh my God, mother, father, sister. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was a gift. Had I had I not had that horrible thing happen, um, I would not be where I am today and changing other people's lives as well as my own every day. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, I mean, I think about even just some of the silly things that I've never, it's like, I, it, this, that relationship has really caused me to do things I've never done before. You know, I, I'm sort of like, it has really inspired me to like, I'm doing so many things that I've never done before. And it's just, you know, so, you know, it's, it's what you decide. It's what you decide, you know, every, every person, it's what you decide to uh, do with every conflict, you know? And, and I think that, that maybe if I could say one more thing is to see things in perspective too, because I, I you know, there was a time when I used to think like, why is this happening to me? Why does this keep happening to me? You know that, but, that's, a, that's actually a skewed perspective of us becoming very, very small. And when we could realize that really conflicts happens, challenges happens, pains happens, good things happens, all in sort of balanced volume to everybody. You know, we forget that when we, when we grew up as victims of, you know, usually like childhood, then we forget that really there's negatives in everyone's lives. You know, we, we tend to kind of become very, you know, like, be in a small world. So we need to break, break out of that and you know, see things for the way they really are, which is everyone deals with lots of different conflicts. And most people, I think, are not taught, you know, whether it's our society, we're not taught to actually think big and think like, what can you do? How could you, you know, how could you be part of, you know, one of the crews of painting the world, you know, I mean, whatever it is, like, you know, so we, we were very small, we, we learned to be small. And then, so then all the bad things that happens just feel so huge, you know, mm -hmm. and like reality is that, you know, it's, it's, it happens to everybody in, you know, different things for us, narcissism and abuse for other people, maybe it's other things, you know, then, so then, you know, we just have to like be the heroes, shake it off and, and, you know, all back together to the <laughs> Yay. <laughs> well thank you so much for joining me today nancy um i know that our conversation will help a lot of people give them some ideas new perspectives a new way of looking at things because that's what it's going to take we can't look backwards we do have to go forward so thank okay. you thank you <laughs> Well, I hope that you found something valuable in that. Nancy's a very smart lady, and um, we talked before the show, we talked after the show, and um, it's so exciting to meet someone with so much passion to want to help people. So thank you for joining me, Nancy. And if you are looking for more understanding, maybe you're looking for a support group or um, looking for what book to read, as I've just discussed, visit my website. It's NarcissistAbuseSupport.com. Um, we've got lots of stuff out there for you, as well as that course that I was talking about called Change the Story. Um, it will change the way you think about things. So um, thank you for joining me and uh, have a nice day.